It's an exciting time for shipping. In April this year, the International Maritime Organization, the IMO, agreed a text for a global net zero framework for shipping. It clearly marks a turning point. It sets a direction for the decarbonization of global shipping and it provides the legal certainty that the industry has so long called for. I think we in the shipping industry have to be aware of this role we have. We as an industry are also first movers, so that's, I think, very powerful and, and a big signal to, to the world. Decarbonization is a team sport. It's not an individual sport. We need the whole ecosystem around us to, to help on the journey. Shipping is connection. It's collaboration. It's countries coming together. Trading partners moving 80% of everything we use. It's a massive industry with a massive climate footprint. But it's aiming high, net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Since setting that goal, the industry has made real progress. Technology is evolving fast. Low emission fuels and engines are here. And the first dual fuel vessels already sailing. Now, just one critical step remains, a global regulatory framework for greenhouse gas emissions. With 176 countries in the International Maritime Organization, a global agreement once seemed impossible, until last April. The fact that we managed to get a framework in April, I think is quite an achievement. I mean, this is a UN a body and I think when we look at the world and all the fragmentation and so on to really be able to get enough countries to agree on a global framework I think is quite an achievement. The IMO Net Zero Framework is a global first for tough to decarbonize industries. It puts a price on greenhouse gas emissions while rewarding cleaner low emission fuels. So the elements of the IMO Net Zero Framework is a couple of things. There's a global fuel standard which is basically a line that determines in a certain year how, how high can your carbon intensity be for, for a given vessel. And if you don't live up to that, you either pay a penalty or you have to team up with someone who is below the line, so who can sell you some overcompliance, so to speak. You may also be getting a reward, so a further incentive for, for fuels that live up to certain uh, very high requirements. The IMO regulation is a catalyst driving innovation and investment in low emission fuels and infrastructure. This momentum can lead to job creation and spark economic growth, while enabling the delivery of the decarbonized solutions customers increasingly demand. We are super committed to support our customers and our customers' customer in this transition to sustainable road transport solutions. We have put eight different truck models into series production in battery electric version. And that is definitely a quite forward-leaning sort of stake in the ground, showing our serious ambitions. Volvo is one of the suppliers that we need for our operation inland when we transport containers uh, from the ports and to the ports uh, and, uh, and, and to and from our customers' premises. But Volvo also needs us. They have a big operation themselves and they also want to decarbonize that operation. And therefore they need vessel solutions like eco-delivery in their operation as well. When we cooperate like this, we can for sure make a huge difference, reducing CO2 emissions and actually making this transition speed up. The adoption of the Net Zero framework could be a turning point for the industry, a decisive move towards cleaner shipping. It has the potential to level the playing field, bringing clarity to an industry ready to evolve. Vinci is one of only two two-stroke designers that are up to, and those engines are applied on the merchant fleet and the big size container vessels, tank boat carriers. We want to transform and power the transformation to the future. Therefore, we have a high focus on the decarbonization targets and make constantly new technologies available to meet these targets. 예, 아시다시피 현대중공업은 그 선박 제조 회사입니다. 저희들이 디자인을 하고 배를 만드는 데 있어 가지고 선조사의 오퍼레이팅이라든지 오래 노하우가 필수적으로 필요합니다. IMO MEPC 83차 발표에 따라 가지고 지금 저탄소에 대한 요구사항이 점점 더 높아지고 있습니다. 이에 따라 가지고 저탄소를 위한 각종 테크놀로지가 개발되고 있는 상황입니다. 
The challenge remains that green fuels are generally two to three times as expensive as fossil fuels today. Closing the price gap between fossil fuels and low emission alternatives is the IMO framework's boldest ambition. It is also key to making sustainable logistics commercially viable. It's a lot about commercial business at the end. Where do we invest our R&D money to have return on investment later on? And the framework is, is an instrument to align the whole industry on the same path. alternative fuel, market demand is very different. So, fuel is not possible to demand is LNG. But methanol is alternative fuel this framework, uh, if adopted, is to make uh, green fuels more competitive with fossil fuels. We could see the much needed investments in green fuel production over the world accelerating in the coming years. The framework is to enter into force by 2027. And from now until then, there is a comprehensive set of technical guidelines that the IMO member states need to develop. The guidelines of this uh, net zero framework uh, is a very important uh, element. It basically contains all the details that makes the framework be either more or less efficient. Something like the life cycle, emissions from a certain fuel type, which value should you use uh, for the different types, uh, how do you measure uh, these values, which fuels can actually get these rewards and which cannot. Obviously, uh, very, very important because it provides uh, an additional financial incentive to use those fuels. All the ship owners now investing in new buildings, they need to know where to invest. And if, if it's not clear where how green fuels, for example, are supported or subsidized. Green fuel infrastructure is subsidized, supported from the pot generated at IMO. These decisions are influenced. Net zero shipping by 2050 is a bold ambition, but it's just the beginning. The real finish line is end-to-end -end decarbonized logistics across all means of transportation. It's really encouraging for us to see how the IMO legislation has developed and how international transportation is now getting addressed by this. MERSC, however, also operates on land and serves our customers basically across their supply chains. In order to really take these encouraging developments and turn them into what would be real emission savings, a number of things really need to happen. There are challenges around grid capacity, renewable electricity, the financing model for the, these EV technologies. But if we can address these, we can actually create a sustainable business model that is cost effective in a low or even zero emissions way going forward. That, however, requires the intervention of regulators. The difference between the landside transportation business and the ocean business when you look at it from sort of regulatory necessity is that in the land side it's the local infrastructure, it's the local regulations, the local incentives that need to be addressed. Whereas the ocean business by nature is a global multi-country business, which means that we need to look across the network and not country by country. Shipping and landside logistics may have different regulatory needs, but they're part of the same story. Their connections and synergies are vital in delivering seamless, end-to-end -end supply chains. And when it comes to reaching net zero, there's only one way forward, collaboration across every link. Nobody can do the decarbonization journey alone. It's a huge ecosystem that needs to work together and all need to push and pull in the right direction. And exactly for that, actually, the net zero framework is needed to make sure that happens. It's not a done deal yet. Still needs to be formally adopted and formally implemented. And there's a lot of work to do to make that happen. But it is quite a unique opportunity that we are faced with here. It is the first time that a global industry manages to get together to find an agreement on how we can address this important problem. And if we miss this opportunity, we'll be set back at least five years. So this really is an opportunity we cannot miss. If we continue to think and act like CO2 would be for free, then this transition would take much longer time. There's a lot of work still to be done and we need to work together across the industry with our customers, with our suppliers, with our partners. But if we do that and we've done it so far, then we can get this job done.